Developers, stop putting yourself in bad situations. Here's five things to look out for so you don't regret your next job. What's up, everyone? My name is James Hugh Quick, and I do weekly videos on web development related topics. And I've worked a ton with developers of all different experience levels. I've taught hundreds of students in boot camps. I do a lot of introductory content. I've worked with intermediate developers and I've worked as a developer for many years myself. And I wanted to kind of take a few minutes to reflect on what I think are some of the most common things that people, developers specifically, will will regret in their job or may regret in their job. And the the problem or the biggest problem is these are things that you can easily keep in mind before joining a company or taking a role, be able to do your research, ask the right questions, and hopefully not put yourself in this position to be in a job that you then regret. Now, a lot of this is going to be specifically relevant for beginner developers who are looking and getting into their first job, but this also applies for developers at different stages of their career. So we'll just go ahead and dive into five things that you should look out for that you might regret in your career, but you can do something about it beforehand so you don't get to that point. So let's kick it off with number one. And this is a little more targeted for people earlier in their career, but there is a lack of mentorship. There's a lack of support at a job that you get into. So if you kind of put yourself in the position of someone who's getting into their first job, you've gone through a boot camp, you've self-taught, maybe you have a computer science degree, whatever the journey is that you took to get to that point, what you know before getting into your first job is not near what you'll know six months into that first job, assuming you're actually doing valuable stuff at that job. So your learning curve is exponential at that point. Once you're able to do it full time, you're doing it 40 or plus hours a week, you're getting paid to do it, you're motivated, you're excited, you're going to learn so, so much. But the thing you really need is a support system around you specifically for mentorship because you're maybe early in your career, but specifically early in your development career, you're, you still have tons of questions. If you don't feel like you have a safe space to ask the person next to you, either virtually or in person, what does this mean? How should I approach this? How can I make this better? If you're not having code reviews, if you're not doing pair programming, for example, if those things aren't already set up at the company that you're looking to join, they're not automatically going to just do those things well for you. So in interviews, you should be asking, what does my support system look like? Will I have a mentor? Do you do pair programming? How do you do code reviews? Make sure that you're asking the questions to know that you're going to go into a supportive environment so that you can take next steps in your career, whether it be a next title or just like leveling up within the title and role that you're currently in. This is one of the most common things that I think companies don't do well because a lot of companies hire senior developers and a lot of senior developers are not intentional about supporting entry level developers. This is something I've taken a passion in. It's something I've always tried to put my myself into the position of being able to mentor because it's something I really enjoy. A lot of employees, a lot of companies don't do this. So make sure that you're asking questions about what sort of mentorship and support you'll have ask you'll have access to when you get into that first job. All right, number two is one that's going to apply across the board for developers of all different experience levels, and that is not negotiating. And if you if you listen to any career advice, if you listen to any like motivational career advice stuff, you're going to hear the general idea of always negotiate. And this is a very tough thing. Like I'm uncomfortable negotiating. I don't think I have a great track record of negotiating, to be honest, but at least I've tried. And it's one of the things that you just have to do, because even if a company is great, they're going to give you as little money as they can get away with, with still making you happy. And so a lot of times it just comes down to asking, hey, if this is the salary that you're offering me, I was hoping to get to this number. Could we meet in the middle? Or or if you have the ability to really aggressively negotiate because you have multiple offer offers or you're not in a huge rush to get a job. You can be very aggressive and say, this is this is the number that you have to meet. Now, that's specifically talking about salary. There's all different kinds of other things that you can negotiate as well. One of my favorites is vacation. I hate the idea of joining a company only having 10 days vacation in a year. That doesn't give you much flexibility to hang out with family, to take trips, to do whatever the things are that you want to do. So that's one of the things that I would definitely call out. There's oftentimes stock options available. Uh, there's often signing bonus. So these are all things that you can negotiate up front. Maybe now it's a it's a work from home cadence. I like to work from home three days out of the week and come into the office two days. Or maybe it's completely remote and you want to work different hours or whatever it is. 
Make sure that you negotiate to get the best out of the offer that you have before actually signing that contract. Now, number three is one that I think kills productivity. It kills optimism. It kills excitement for what you're doing. And that's a poor culture and specifically a poor work-life balance. Now, what are things that apply to culture? One of the things that we've already talked about is a support system, a mentorship uh, system. Do they have that in place? Are they going to be able to support you as you're learning and then be able to support you to take next steps in your career? Because good managers are going to have conversations with you about what your goals are. What do you want to get better at? What do you want to do in your career? And how can I, the manager, not me, just the manager, how can I support you in getting to that point? Those are conversations that good managers are going to have. So there's the relationship with your manager. There is the relationship with a support system with mentorship. There's obviously the culture on your team. But I think one of the, one of the or maybe two things to really keep an eye out for that are really big red flags early on in, um, in your experience with a company and a role is two things. One is looking people looking for blame. Something goes wrong and they're looking to blame someone whether than to use instead of using this as a learning opportunity for an individual and a team. They're looking to blame you and make you the make you the scapegoat for what went wrong instead of taking a positive approach to that. And this is a very, very common thing. Now, the other thing that I think is really important to look out for is arbitrary deadlines that all of a sudden get enforced really, really highly to the point where you're now having to work late. So a question you can ask in an interview is, is how often do people on your team stay past 5 p.m.? How often do people on your team work on the weekends? These are immediate red flags for me. I'm at a, a, a more advanced level in my career where I can be really picky about opportunities if I'm looking for them. I never am going to work on the weekends again if I can avoid it. I'm never going to be on a call if I can avoid it. So you can ask, what's what's the last time that you worked past 5 p.m.? How often do you do that? How often do you work weekends? If they have an on-call rotation, how often do, does something go wrong? Do you get called? Make sure you understand those things before walking into the role because those are the things that really take the fun out of it. If you're in a poor work culture, if you're surrounded by people who aren't inspired, if you're surrounded by people who are willing to work hours and hours and hours, it's not going to be a fun environment and it's not going to be one you should enjoy and it's not going to be good for your personal mental health. So make sure to ask questions about work culture before going in to join a company. Now, another thing that will take out the fun in your job is a boring tech stack. And this may not be something you can prevent up front, especially if you're looking for your first role. Like you got to take what you got to take because you need a job, for example. But a lot of people get in these situations where they, they sit and work with an outdated tech stack and they see all the things that we talk about on Twitter with new frameworks and methodologies and all these things. And they, they have this big gap of what they're doing versus what they would like to do, maybe. And, and one thing to keep in mind is like the tutorials and, and things you see on YouTube most companies don't move that fast. So it's going to be hard to find a, uh, a company that's using the, the framework that just came out last week. But if you're, sit, if you're sitting and stagnant with older technologies, there's a few things that are wrong with that. One, like the, it's not exciting. So you're going, to, you're going to be bored. You're going to be unhappy. You're going to want to do other things. But probably most important is you're spending a lot of time at that company building up skills that are not going to help you for your next role. Like if you, if you want your next role to be something more modern, the more time you spend not learning about that modern thing and, and investing time in this older technology, you're really hurting yourself in your career opportunities. So I highly, highly encourage you to ask about the tech stack, not only as it is now, but what are what are modernization efforts that they have into place? What it, What is their plan over the next couple of years to modernize their tech stack? What are the technologies that they're looking at? And then what's cool is if you find a place that actually takes modernization seriously and they're looking to you know, change some of the tooling and tech stack, you can be one of those people to say, hey, I would like to be one of the people that goes out and does research and helps us kind of like build a plan with these technologies because I am particularly interested in in broadening my skill set and understanding to incorporate these new technologies. That's a situation that I found myself in at FedEx where we were getting into kind of modern web development. And I was kind of one of the pioneers of that because it's something that I was really, really interested in. And I was excited to go and do the research and lead the effort to modernize those things. So ask about what the tech stack is, ask about what it's going to be, ask about what modernization efforts are, make sure it's skills that ideally are gonna align with what you're interested in and something that's gonna help you progress in your career and be good on your resume long-term. 
Now I've been doing these in recent videos where I'm just doing kind of like community shout outs and I've got two here that I want to call out. And one is Dev Day 23. Now, first, I'll just be honest with you. I'm biased. This is uh, an online virtual two day event that's completely free. That's put on by not only the company I used to work at, which is Auth0 slash Okta, but also my wife is one of the ones organizing this. But uh, Dev Day 23, they did developer days last year in person in a few different cities, and I went with my wife and we had a great time. These are talks about security and identity, and they're completely free. So they have workshops, they have talks, they've got, you can see the whole schedule in here, uh, but you can find the link at, I think it's just dev, let me see, developerday.com. I'll have a link to that in the description below so you can check it out. It's completely free. Sign up, listen to a couple of talks, see what's out there, see what's going to be a good fit for you. But it's a fun community event. The All Zero team and Octa team are awesome. So go and check it out at developerday.com. Now, the next one I want to shout out, I shouted out in a previous video as well, which is Image Carbon. And this is at imagecarbon.com. Now, this is a tool completely free created by a friend of mine, Colby Fayok. And the idea here is you enter in a website and what the application does is it scrapes your site, it grabs all of your images and it tells you how you could optimize this if you served different formats or whatever. So in a second, when this finishes, it's going to show a, con a conversion or a comparison of here's the original image and here's what you could do if you optimize this, which is really, really neat. So you can see on here, the estimated total size of my original images is 846 kilobytes. This thing says that I could optimize this to be 67 kilobytes if I change some formats. Now, there is one thing that it doesn't take into account, which is the Astro image component, which you should source that. So my images are actually a little better, I think, than what it looks like here. But it has this cool comparison of like your carbon emissions of 10,000 people visit your thing per month, which I don't get that many. Uh, here's how much pizza or gas burned or cups of coffee this equates to. So you can see this goes image by image and breaks it down. I think this tool is really neat. Image optimization stuff is like actually a huge, uh, huge, can be a huge hit if you're not doing it on your website. So check out Image Carbon at imagecarbon.com. All right, now the last thing that I think is one of my, will turn into one of my favorite pieces of advice, but the thing that people regret at their jobs is staying too long. I, I've seen this over and over again, especially at my time in FedEx, where there were so many people that had been at FedEx for 10 plus years and they looked at like, this is just what I'm going to do for the rest of my life until I retire. Which is really unfortunate because I felt like a lot of the people that I was around, not my immediate team members, but a lot of like comp, like broader team members, they just looked at it as like, this is as good as it's going to get. And this is all I got. And that that was really sad for me and frustrating. And so I, I have this interesting idea or maybe not really interesting and unique, but it is an idea of mine that or a hypothesis that whatever you do in your job, no matter how happy you are with it, there's there's a hundred percent, ninety nine percent chance there's another job at another company that you would be just as happy with, but also improve certain things like money or tech stack or something. So an example for me is I was with FedEx for a few years and made a transition to another place, then moved on uh, to ultimately Planet Scale and now do my own thing. But I almost tripled my salary over the course of two and a half, three years, and that was from being open to opportunities as they came up. So for a many for a bunch of different reasons, be open to different jobs, interview every year, consider when recruiters reach out to you about jobs, just learn about what's out there. It doesn't mean you have to take it. It doesn't mean I'm advocating that people leave their job every six months to go and get paid more. That's not at all what I'm advocating for. And I consider myself very loyal to companies that I work for when and after I work for them. What I'm saying is be open to possibilities and don't overstay your welcome just because it's easy. Don't stay there just because it's the thing that you already have in place. Stay there because you love it and you feel respected and you're excited about the stuff that you're doing. And if that changes, if that's not the case, go and find something else because there's a million jobs out there. There's a million opportunities for you to find improvements in different areas. Again, not saying a job hop every six months, but be open, take interviews, have conversations, be open to taking different opportunities so that you can continue to progress yourself in your career and your overall career happiness. Now, I know this is supposed to be five things that developers regret in their jobs, but I'm going to add on one more. And this is a kind of a, I think a lot of us will relate to this, but it's kind of funny. So I taught a boot camp where I had several of my students join my team at FedEx and a few of them commented, 
how much time we spent in meetings. And I think this is like part of culture as well. Like we probably did too many meetings, but I remember a few of them being particularly frustrated of like, I want to write code and we're spending a lot of time in meetings. And they were kind of surprised at how much time they spent in meetings. And I think that's something that you can ask about as well, going into a job and interviews. How much time do you spend in meetings? How do you handle standups? That sort of stuff to make sure that you feel like it's a good balance because the worst case scenario is you feel like you're wasting your time in meetings and it's taking away from you to, from you doing other things to help progress your skills, to help build things, to help add more things, to beef up your resume. So it's kind of a it's kind of a, a funny one. I think at times it can be a joke of like how much time we spend in meetings, but ask about that. Make sure it seems like a balance that you're going to be excited about and also give you the ability to continue to write code on a daily basis without too much interruptions. So anyway, those are a few things that I think developers of different stages, and then some of these were specific to beginner developers, have have regretted in their careers, have regretted at their jobs, and it's things that I think you should be keeping an eye out for as you look for next steps in your career. So if you have any other things that you've regretted in your career that you'd like to share with us, share those in the comments below. I'd love to see those and kind of have a dialogue and conversation about that. In the meantime, I hope you enjoyed the video. Thanks for watching, and I'll catch you next time.